Alright guys, um, I didn't really get to film too much of the house renovation project, because frankly I was just trying to get it done. Yeah, right. Yeah. This is what I'm dealing with while I'm trying to film. Um, so, I figured I would try to make up for that by showing some of the projects now that the room is kind of finished. Um, so I'm not going to show the entire room yet, because I'm going to do a walkthrough video, but uh, you'll probably see most of it throughout the video. Anyway. What we got going on right now is we're putting surround sound in. This is going to be our theater room now. So I figured for anybody who's not familiar with installing uh, surround sound, you know, like the not just the buy it as one big kit kind of thing, um, we we piece this together with components. Uh, I mean, I used all the speakers are, are Polk audio, but this is a Yamaha receiver. And, um, you know, anybody who's not familiar with this, I figured I'll give them a crash course. I have, I've done a few of these. Um, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but it's kind of like the rest of my videos where I know a little bit about something, you know, and I know enough that I'm comfortable doing it on my own. So I'm hoping to help you guys do the same thing on your own. Right? Yeah. You do you on your own. All right. So before we get too start or too into it, we got the Polk T50 towers, we have the Polk T30 center, the Polk T15 bookshelves, the Polk 108 um, subwoofer, and this is the Yamaha RXV 485. Uh, reason we went with the 485 is we're doing 5.1 surround, which basically means five speakers individually one two three four five and then the point one is a subwoofer so we needed a 5.1 surround sound system which this is and one of the bigger things for me was the four hdmis uh inputs to it basically because i want to do dvd blu-ray probably xbox probably playstation and then um be able to run the cable into it if we ever put cable down here so that was another big one. Bluetooth is nice. If we're entertaining, we like to just like sync up a phone with Pandora or something playing. I actually think this one has Pandora built into it. Uh, maybe. I guess not. Oh, yeah, it does. Sorry, right there. Right in front of my face. So that's cool. Um, it does have the Apple, the AirPlay stuff, so it works good with our phones and the iPad and everything. It's really nice. Uh, I like Yamaha as a brand. This is my first time doing the Polk. Um, all the speakers were on clearance when we actually bought the TV. And that's why uh, that's why we went with them. You know, so that made that pretty easy. So while I was at Best Buy, we got the surge protector, uh, which is like the most important investment you'll ever make on any kind of home audio or entertainment or anything. Uh, fun fact, we have we have a uh, Samsung TV upstairs and it's on a surge protector. One of the times in the past where the trees fell on the power lines, um, that surge protector actually burned. Uh, it didn't catch on fire or anything like that. It melted the casing and it smelled, but it saved the TV. So even these cheap guys, uh, I forget what this one cost. But it was like $15, you know, and that's all we had on that Samsung. I would highly recommend that if you're going to buy something or take anything away from this video, buy yourself a surge protector. You never know. Um, we have a, I have a really nice surge protector on my PC, actually. That was like $100, but it's also a battery backup. So, aside from that, we got the, uh, the speaker mount system here for the bookshelves. The bookshelves are going to go up on the beam up there. Uh, which I've already started putting them on there. Easy enough. Uh, I got a 100 foot of, of uh, six, 16 gauge speaker wire. I got a HDMI cable that's too short, so I'll have to go and exchange that tomorrow. I got a four footer, I need a six footer. And then went to Home Depot, got their cord mate wire tracking in two different sizes. We have 40, fit, 40 feet of cord mate two which core make two i forget offhand the exact size of it it probably tells me on here it doesn't 
It's good for, uh, they say, two powers and an HDMI, or an HDMI, an Ethernet, and a power. So that's fine. And the Cordmate 3, they say, will hold five power wires, and it's pretty big. So what I did before going and buying all that stuff is I drew it out. I drew out what I wanted to do. How I wanted to do this, I know that I have six feet between about here on the TV stand to that corner. Same over there. Um, I know that I have three feet from the center of this TV of this stand to behind the TV where you can't see it anymore. And without drawing it, I did measure uh, going this way up to that corner and then over to that corner. And that's how I figured out how many feet I need. Then I got all the connectors to put the tracks together. Um, the Cordmate 3. Home Depot, at least my Home Depot, doesn't sell individual sections. They only sell the accessory kit, which unfortunately I had to buy the whole accessory kit just to get one centerpiece or one uh, splice piece, but is what it is. So I started doing this this morning, and then um, uh, Brandon got here and we started working on the deck. So let me see if I can give you a better. All right, so here's the back of this, the Yamaha receiver. Um, it's, you know, it might look intimidating, but it's, it's really simple, I promise. So all we're really concerned with is this HDMI port, which if you see is ARC, I don't remember what ARC stands for, but ARC HDMI, and you'll need to make sure that your TV is also compatible and has the same port, will allow your TV and this to work both ways. So your your TV, um, instead of using your TV speakers, it'll just go straight through the surround sound without using an audio in or anything like that. If I remember correctly, I can control this with the TV remote as well. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what that meant. This is gonna be our wired ethernet. Um, I made sure to run wired ethernet in every room of this house uh, because wired ethernet is infinitely faster than Wi-Fi. And then, we have all our speaker connections here, positive and negative terminals for each one. Very easy to use. They just unscrew like such. And they show you the nice diagram here, hi, shy, shy. Uh, which tells you 10 millimeters to strip off and then twist it. And basically, once you back these off, there's a hole, which I'll show you in a minute. You stick it, uh, stick the stripped wire through the hole and then tighten the lug back down just like I have here. Um, when you look at speaker wire, it's always going to have uh, something on one of them so you can identify positive from negative. Uh, in this case, I don't know how well you can see them. Let me see if I can see his back screen. It has writing on this one and only on that one. You can kind of see it. Let's see. I don't know if you can see it or not, but anyway, the one, this side here has writing on it and it's got dots where there's no writing and that's what I'm going to use as my ground wire. Um, sometimes you'll get speaker wire and it'll have a white tracer on it. Sometimes it'll have two separate colors. I've even seen that before. This is Rocketfish, which is pretty sure it's Best Buy's brand um, and that's how they mark it. So just kind of pay attention to that. But you know, you have positive and negative on the back of the receiver, and coincidentally, you have positive and negative on the back of every speaker. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So we're going to start doing this. I, like I said, I started this earlier, and this is as far as I got, so I figured I'd take you guys along with me on the rest of it. So let me get you set up. All right, so you can kind of see there's a hole through each terminal. And basically by screwing that back down, you'll pinch that hole off. So all you do is take your stripped and twisted ends here, figure out which one's which. So this is the one with the writing on it, so that's my ground. Put it in, 
so that when you tighten it, it's not going to get stuck on the insulation and it's going to get a, it's going to pinch just the copper contact ins or the copper wires inside and then give it a little tuck. Make sure it ain't going to come out. This one's going to be just a touch short. So make it a little longer. Put it through. that now we're nice and tight take the speaker and normally I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, tilt it against the wall like that I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see put it where it's gonna go and basically what I'm gonna do is track up to like a little bit behind it and let that just come out of the tracking so I'll leave the wire kind of loose at the moment <laughs> So basically these are just plastic, two brackets, you know, or two screws rather go into the wall, preferably into the stud, in this case not a stud. So we'll be using the drywall anchors, you know, you drill the hole in the drywall, you put the anchor in and you screw the screw into it and it expands the anchor inside the drywall. Uh, the speakers aren't that heavy so I'm not really that worried about it. I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, they have three adjustments on them. These mounts, that is. Which, learning from the other side, I'm just going to leave them all pretty loose. I do have to tighten in order to mount the speaker. So, inside here, I don't know if you can see it or not, is a Phillips head screw. And uh, basically, kit came with a bunch of options for mounting but the way it works on these speakers is you put this on the back of it the back of the screw that they give you and it just kind of slots in comes up and you tighten the screw What I found is if it's too loose, uh, this will turn. So as long as you can't turn that, it seems like it's tight enough. So I just marked the wall up there uh, so that that speaker will match that one. That one, there was a stud there. Uh, the stud holds that switch assembly on. This side does not have a stud. So like I said, we need the drywall anchors. So I'm going to do two small pilot holes, the smallest drill bit I have in that kit. Um, I'm holding this up there so I know where it goes. 
And then I'll go over now with this bit, <clears throat> which is a something. Seven thirty seconds. But basically, what I do is I just kind of, you know, it's slightly smaller than the dry anchor, drywall anchor, but not much. So that's usually how I figure out which bit I'm going to use. So let me get that done, uh, done and let's get the speaker up on the wall. Press for time today. Gotta go to work. Best Buy, got the subwoofer cable, the adapter because the output on the receiver is a one, input is a left right on the sub, got an eight foot network cable because I didn't feel like making one, and we got eight foot HDMI to go from the receiver to the TV. After that we basically got to plug the subwoofer in and uh, we'll be able to set it up to run its self calibration. Um, and this is what I was talking about. The line in on the back of the sub is a left right. The line out on the back of the receiver is a single. So we just gotta split that. And um, if it doesn't sound right, you can usually just switch the face with the switch. And uh, that's where we'll that's where we are right now, I should say. So let's get this finished up because I gotta go to work in about a half an hour. All right, so uh, yeah, I didn't have much of a chance to film any kind of an ending for this video because I had to go to work. So basically where it left off was the receiver unit was doing its self-calibration, which basically means that you set the little microphone in the optimal viewing position, which is where I'm technically sitting straight onto the screen where the couch is, and you set it to about ear level for the you know people viewing. So we did that. And what it does is it plays a bunch of tones through each speaker individually and it determines 
how loud or quiet to make each speaker individually so that they're all the same and the distance is proper. And uh, basically it takes maybe two minutes to do that test and it really makes a big difference on all the videos that you'll watch. Um, we watched a few movies on it. It's been going for about a week now. Hi, Bubba. Yeah. Is this your favorite room now? Because it has carpet in it? Yeah. And uh, so far, the room's been a hit with everybody. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, I recommend everybody goes through that self-chat or that self-setup. Unless you really know what you're doing, which I don't, as I already said. So I can't set the thing up myself. I just let it do its thing. But, you know, it came out good. The only thing I have left is I got to take the the Cordmate 3 and conceal these wires here going to the TV. But I got a few more cables that I got to run that haven't come in yet. But we have our fronts. We have our sub. We have our center. We have our rears. And um, ignore that. I got to trim this out and cut those. But anyway. So yeah, as always, thanks for watching guys, and uh, I'm going to finish editing this and get this posted now.